ഹലോ ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം വെൽക്കം ടു ജി ഇ ജി തിരുവനന്തപുരം വെബിനാർ ഓൺ ആൻഡ് ടുഡേ വിത്ത് മീ ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ഫേമസ് ഗാവിൻ മക്കോമാത്ത് ഈസ് വിത്ത് മീ ടുഡേ വി വിൽ ബി ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് ഓൺ എസ് ഡി ജി ഗോൾസ് കോഴ്സസ് ദാറ്റ് ആർ അവൈലബിൾ ഇൻ അപ് സ്കൂൾ ഐ ബിലീവ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ആർ ഫെമിലിയർ വിത്ത് അപ് സ്കൂൾ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം and it is completely free for students to learn to understand and learn themselves so i welcome uh, gavin uh, and gavin hello yes uh, Hi. thank you hello mohammed how are you sir i'm doing good how are you i'm also i know good, it's very you. late night in uh, your place australia but you have taken the time to come and uh, be in our show <laughs> it is very late here. I actually got the times wrong. I thought it was 9:30, but it's actually 10:30. So it's no problem. Uh I'm more than happy to stay up late to uh pursue this uh educational change that we want to see in the world. And I want to say a big thank you for you uh, for inviting me. I feel honored to be here, so I'm really appreciative Mohammed of you being here uh and uh helping me and uh you know all these people come along and and understand more about what we're trying to do and more about the SDGs on up school combined i just want to say also for anybody watching mohammed assal is actually um uh, an up school ambassador we were very happy to welcome him as an ambassador an amazing man i met him at the uh, guest education conference last year and i thought that is the kind of guy that i want to be friends with and a year later we're very good friends so i'm very thankful to you mohammed much appreciated thank you Bob. okay everybody so uh without further ado we'll move on and we'll get on with today's presentation now just so that everybody is aware of what's going to be happening today um we'll be here for about 45 minutes to an hour and i didn't want to just make this presentation a sales pitch i'm not a salesman i'm a teacher um but what i wanted to do was just explain to you uh about um how we can potentially help your school how we can help your teachers uh, and also more importantly how we can help your students uh, because ultimately everything that we do is about education and obviously education is about children and that's why we're all here that's why we're doing this work that's why we're teachers education and leaders uh, or anything else that we do in the realm of education now over the next 45 minutes to about an hour in the first half of this session what i really wanted to do is I really wanted to explain to you the importance of connection uh, in your schools. Um I'm a school principal myself and I've worked in education for 25 years. But for the first half of this session I wanted to show you uh, how you can have um independence, connection, trust in your schools and then when you have that I wanted to uh, show you how we can help you to do some absolutely wonderful things uh, with your school, community, with your children. and in the world now throughout the presentation you're probably going to see um some qr codes now when you see qr codes appearing on your screen you're more than welcome to hold up your telephone scan that qr code mm. i have made a series of presentations for you and resources and tools and task cards and all of these are free of charge for you and you can take them as you wish and there's going to be plenty of these appearing so this isn't just me talking this is me giving away everything i possibly can so that you can enjoy them okay so let's begin without further ado this is me gavin mccormack uh, i'm a teacher 25 years the reason i put this picture up every time i do a presentation is because as teachers we're not in this job for money this is not about becoming wealthy this is not about becoming rich we are not going to be rich in money but we will be rich in heart and you see the little boy in the blue t-shirt with a big white smile that is why I do this job as a teacher and I'm sure that is why you do it and that's why we're here this evening because we want our children to be happy we want them to be content and we want them to feel safe and secure in our environment now I'm the Montessori Australia ambassador which means I'm a Montessori trained teacher I was a more mainstream teacher for a long time I retrained as a Montessori teacher this is my old school community farmhouse montessori school here in australia uh, where we had hundreds of children doing remarkable stuff really remarkable stuff 
And quite often what we think is that our children are just coming to school to learn the ABCs and literacy and numeracy and science, but actually we underestimate them and we underestimate their potential to make big changes in the world. And today I'm hopefully going to present that to you. Now, over the last seven years, I visited Nepal many, many times, as well as numerous other countries, but Nepal is my second home. I noticed there in 2017 that the education system was broken, so I visited three, four, five times a year. And over that period of time, we have renovated education in the country. We built schools, libraries, and actually right now as we sit here today, um, I'm running three of the biggest teacher training centers in the country, all Montessori training centers, in the hope of changing the education system in the country and hopefully helping children. Now, um, now, at this current moment in time, I'm not a principal. I've left that job and I'm working in an organization called Upschool. You'll learn more about Upschool at the end of this presentation, but ultimately, Upschool is a free resource for you and you can use it as you wish. There are so many things for you to do. There is no charge whatsoever. And I just wanted to introduce my team here. Um, now, there are many other people in this team, but these are some of the people I wanted to introduce you today. And obviously, myself in this presentation. Then we have Richard Mills. He's a dear friend of mine and one of my co-founders. We founded the company together. He is a teacher from Melbourne, Australia. Then we have Dr. Kate Jackson. She is over in Costa Rica, in Central America, an educational psychologist plus uh, a doctor and a teacher. She works alongside us too. Dan Lackis is an educational um, genius. Uh, he actually co-founded Elon Musk's school over in uh, Starbase in America. He now works with us as a content creator alongside myself. And then the amazing Mohammed Afsal, who is our education ambassador for, uh, for Upschool.co. And I put his face here and we're very grateful for him for doing wonderful work in spreading the word and helping us get out in front of other people. I just want to read this quote to you. I think it's one of the probably the most important quotes I've ever read. And it's when a school community chooses to prioritize the well-being of their students, the sustainability of the planet and the engagement of the entire school community as the foundation of their educational philosophy, they empower students to make a difference in the world. This purposeful approach to education fosters engagement amongst all stakeholders through agency, choice and the development of essential skills, which we will talk about later. Now, when students are rewarded for the impact they have on others, education thrives and school becomes a place of positive change. In education, the only constant is change and that change is you as a teacher. So we all do this job for one reason, and that's for the world to become better. My quote is, hope sits on the carpet of every classroom in the world, including yours. So let's talk about six steps to building connection in your school, and then we'll get on how we can achieve the SDGs. So connection in your school, very important indeed. Step one, it's very important to acknowledge everybody's needs. When it comes to running a school, you sometimes think that there's just the children. However, there is way more at stake than that. There are teachers, there are students, and there are parents. And when you know what everybody wants, you can meet the needs of your community. So just look at some of the statements on your screen. Let's take one of the student statements. The third one says, inspire me to think. I love using my brain. Children want to be able to be challenged. They don't want to be spoon fed, which we quite often do because we're so worried about the results, the tests, the grades, the points, the scores, the percentages. And we want them to get 100%, but they want to think. They want to fail. They want to be challenged. Do we know what they want? Our teachers. I want the management of the school to trust me, say teachers, meaning when I have a curriculum, I really want to make it my own. I don't just want to tell the children what's in the document because I have other passions and I have other things that inspire me. Trust me to do my job. I'm a professional. I'm a teacher. And number three, we have the parents. So look at the third one. I care dearly about my child. I want them to be happy. And that's really important that we know what our parents want because in this whole thing that we call school, parents are actually the most important part because they vote with their feet. If you are not doing what a parent wants or a group of parents require, then parents will opt out and enroll somewhere else. So it's very important to know all of the stakeholders. Now, this is part of building trust. If you want to download this document on your screen, scan the QR code and it will appear magically on your telephone. Step two, take a truly 
child-centered approach. And I say that with such strong conviction because many schools around the world say they are child-centered, but it's not true. Let's talk about true child-centered learning. On the left-hand side, you have a teacher-centered approach. The teacher at the front, children watching, looking, listening, filling in worksheets, forms, copying tasks, and doing tests. This is about the teacher knowing everything and the students listening and hopefully taking in some of that knowledge. This is a teacher-centered approach to, to learning, and we want to get rid of this. What we want to move towards is a student-centered approach, and a student-centered approach is a more holistic approach. It's where we share the learning with the students. We share their beliefs. We allow them to collaborate, allow them to move. The teacher is dynamic. The teacher can be on the floor, at the front, in the bookshelf, behind the cupboard. It's about movement. It's about choice. It's about freedom, and it's about agency. But more importantly, it's about a shared belief that everybody has some kind of thing when it comes to teaching other people in the class, even the students teaching the teacher. Now, when it comes to actually teaching as a process, we have two types of teachers. The first one I'm going to share with you is called a product-driven teacher. And this is where product-driven learning appears, and we want to get rid of this. This is something we want to abolish. Let me explain a scenario to you. So you have a class. And in that class, there's 30 children, kindergarten children, and they're all outside playing on the playground. Now, a, a product-driven approach to teaching is where the teacher prepares all of the card and the googly eyes and the string and the nose and the scissors and puts them on the tables. And when the students come in, she says to the children, hey, everybody, we've been learning all about mice. And today we're going to make a mouse. And the children say, yay, I can't wait to make a mouse. I love making things. Teacher says, OK, everybody pick up your circular piece of card and stick on your pink nose right in the middle. I'm going to do the same. Pick. Now put your eyes on. Pick. Now put your, your mouth on. Now put your and the children follow this recipe. And at the end of this, they have this mouse and this mouse looks perfect. Every child in the class has the perfect mouse. They take it home, show mum and mum says, wow, what an amazing mouse. And in the morning, the teacher comes uh, to the door and meets the parent. And the parents say, wow, this is an amazing school. My child made a mouse. It looks so wonderful. But little does the parent know that there was no experimentation, no choice. There was no freedom, no agency, no creativity, no confidence, no individuality. It was just a recipe for success that the teacher dictated. And outside, it looked wonderful, but actually underneath it, there was nothing really happening when it comes to creativity or creative in learning. And then we come to what we really are looking for, and that's a process-driven approach. And that is where the same teacher, the same scenario, the same classroom. But when the children come in from playtime, there is no card on the table. There are no scissors, no glue, no nothing. But the teacher says, hey, guys, I know we've been learning about mice this term. Today, we're going to make a mouse. Now, I've made a mouse. And a teacher shows her mouse to the class. The class says, wow, that's great. And the teacher says, OK, guys, you have got 45 minutes. You can use the card, the paper, the paints, the glue, the scissors. It's all yours. You can work with whom you wish, and you can work wherever you want. But in 45 minutes, we're going to meet on the carpet, and you are going to show us your mouse, and you are going to tell us all about how you made it and how it felt to make something like that. Now, you can see in the picture on your screen, your mouse may not look perfect, but your children get to use a wide range of materials. They have complete control. They're using problem solving, critical thinking, encourages experimentation, confidence, collaboration, personal expression, and creativity. But when that child takes that mouse home to show mom that night, the mom says, hmm, it doesn't really look like a mouse. I'm not sure this school is doing a very good job. And then the parent meets the teacher in the morning on the playground and the parent says, look, I'm slightly concerned about my child. When he came home and showed me his mouse, he looked more like a dog. And the teacher says, in our school, we encourage creativity, independence, collaboration, confidence, perseverance, determination, all the things that your child needs to survive in the 21st century, because we are a process-driven school. We are not a product-driven school. And you can see the two sides of that straight away. Now, number three in developing confidence and connection in your school is the power of story. We all have a story to tell. Now, in 1937, there was a rapidly spreading disease flying around the world, very similar to COVID-19, but this one was a child color. It was called 
polio. And it meant that children could not go out of their houses at all, especially to school. So the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation of Great Britain, they hired a series of teachers to broadcast lessons over the radio. Now, these weren't the best teachers in the world, but they were the best storytellers. And children all around the world engaged in this learning from Africa to India to Asia to Europe, all over the planet. And what was really important here was the power of story. It was about getting that hook and getting the grip. And if you really want to get your children hooked into your learning, you must make sure you use the power of story to do that. And one way you can really do that is change the way you teach your lessons. So instead of a standard lesson where the teacher is at the front in a teacher-centered approach, talking for the whole hour or even the whole day, our uh, approach to develop independence, choice, freedom, agency, confidence, resilience, empathy, love, understanding, perseverance, determination, when you want to have these things in your students, you must change the way you teach. And that means something like what you're looking at on the board here. So the first thing to do is inspire your children. Inspire them, but only inspire them for five minutes. You don't need to stand there for 60 minutes. Tell them something amazing about what you are going to learn today. So if you're learning about snails, then you tell them, that snails have 17,000 teeth and they are pollinators just like a bumblebee and they make their shell out of calcium and they leave a snail trail so that the males can follow the females and have a snail on the table in front of the children. So the children are very engrossed in this wonderful lesson but only talk for five minutes and then Ask your students, what would you like to know about insects? And every hand goes up in your class. Uh, sir, sir, um, does a bumblebee see in black and white? Sir, 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 can an ant really carry 100 times its weight? Sir, 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 why does a dung beetle collect dung? Now, you don't need to answer these questions, but you do need to take note of them. You write them down on the board. 10 minutes has gone on the lesson so far. And then step three, you release your children. Goodbye, off you go. You've now got 45 minutes to research one of these questions or all of them. You can work where you wish. You can work with whom you like, but you, you can use everything in the classroom. But in 45 minutes, we're going to meet. You're going to teach us what you've learned and we are going to reflect. And you can see that as soon as you do that, your students are going to develop the independence and the confidence they need to survive in tomorrow's world. Step four, activate the senses. We all have senses as we know, and in order to teach our children absolutely perfectly, we need to know which ones of these senses should we be activating the most. Now, many of you are going to be shocked in a second because I'm going to show you an image that maybe you haven't seen before. This is homunculus, and homunculus is a creation from Harvard University, and this is a depiction of a child. Now, obviously, it's not a real child. It's a child where the organs have been enhanced and they have been enlarged or shrunk depending on the cognitive impact they have on a child's educational development. So let's break it down. I cannot see any ears on this model, but in 99.9% .9 of the classrooms in the world, teachers talk for most of the day and they talk at the students. But as you can see, it doesn't really have much of an impact on our child's learning. Look at the eyes. Yes, they're kind of big, but they're not so big. Yes, children need visuals, but it's not the most important thing of all. The two biggest features you'll find on this model are the mouth. The mouth tells us our students need to be talking. They need to be communicating. Can you imagine this webinar we're having today if I wasn't speaking? Nothing would be happening. But when we allow our students to speak and talk and debate and negotiate and compromise, then they learn. They learn from each other and they learn a thousand times quicker than we could possibly teach them. But the biggest factor here is the hands. And that tells us our students need to touch. Our students need to touch and feel things. So if you are teaching anything, anything at all, the most important thing you can do is have something tactile that your students can touch. If you are teaching rainforests, have a leaf on the table on everyone's table. If you are teaching soil, have soil on the table. Geology, have rocks on the table. Insects, have a snail on the table. It doesn't matter. The hand is the gateway to the brain. So our children need to be able to talk and touch. But if we're really, truly honest with ourselves, in most classrooms around the world, students are not allowed to talk, 
and they're certainly not allowed to touch. In fact, when I was at school, my teacher told me to sit on my hands because I was touching things too much, which means my teacher was telling me, Gavin, I don't want you to learn to your full potential, which is very sad when I look back on that now. Now, why do our students need this kind of learning? Because that's what our workforce is going to look like. On the left-hand side is my school, Farmhouse Montessori School. You will see this is a stage one classroom. Children in the class are three to six years of age. They are moving, talking, walking around, sitting on the floor, working in pairs, working individually. But look at them. They are learning. They are learning deeply. And what I can't see is a teacher, which I'm very happy about. She's probably working one on one with a child somewhere while everybody else works independently. Now, look at the world they're walking into. That's Airbnb's head office in San Francisco, one of the most profitable, creative and innovative companies on the planet. That's where they're going to work, our children. So we must make sure that our classrooms resemble what the world looks like that they're going to walk into. Now, how do we do this? Well, there's a lot of skills out there that we need to develop in our children, and I will teach you about these a little bit later on. But what I've made you something which I think is really, really great, and I think you would love it. Now, this is a um, this is a uh, a yearly calendar, okay? And I made it just for you. Now, on this calendar, you have 40 of the top skills that children need to learn for the 21st century, and I divided them into 40 weeks because, on average, around the world, there's around 40 weeks in a school year in every country on the planet. So. When you download this, you will then have a calendar of skills that you can focus on one week at a time. Now, these are skills you cannot teach because you cannot teach empathy, you cannot teach humility, you cannot teach love, but you can model them. So it's all about the teacher modeling these things, and it's all about you discussing them and opening up to conversations in circle time, in class times, in, in um, when you're reflecting. All of these things are important, and I made you a yearly calendar so that you can actually take that on in your school starting tomorrow when all the work's being done for you. When you download it, you will see a series of activities too. Step five, bring your passion into the school. You're a teacher. You have passions. You're not a robot. You don't live in the cupboard, although children think that you live in the cupboard, but you don't. You live a normal life. You should be able to bring your passions, your loves right into the classroom and tell the children exactly who you are. Now, I'm a mountain climber. I like to go to the Himalayas. I like to teach. Now, if you look at the picture on your screen, look at the faces of those children. Look at their eyes. Look at their smiles. Because I wasn't teaching from a curriculum. I wasn't teaching from a textbook. I was teaching something that I loved. In fact, I was telling them a story about a time when a rhinoceros chased me through the jungle. And you can see just look how engrossed those children are. And they're engrossed because I was allowed to bring my passion into the lesson. And that's very important. Our students are very astute. They can tell when your heart is not in it. So your objective is to put your heart right in the center of your lesson. And when we demonstrate that we are human and we have passions and we sometimes make mistakes, children realize it's okay for them to be human too. If you're upset, Tell your students, today I'm upset. If you're tired, tell them. If you're sad, tell them. If you're happy, tell them. If you make a mistake, tell them. If you shout by accident and get angry, it's human. Apologize and let them know that. Make sure that you are modeling the behavior you wish to view in the children in your classroom because that is what is the most important. It's important that you model, you observe your students, and then you reflect on your own behavior. So whether it's a child creating a picture for her grandma with the hope of bringing a smile to the face of the entire school or planting a forest to attract the first bird, the essence of educational success lies in asking the question, how did our work contribute to making the world a better place? Now, the final step to this six step approach is making time for observation. Now, if you follow the steps previous to this, you'll find that your students are having more agency, more choice, more freedom, which means they don't need you so much. You are free. Now, you're not free to go to the staff room and have a cup of tea, and you're not free to go home. You are free to do something amazing, and that is observe. You're free to observe your students, and you're free to see what they're up to. Now, how do we, how do we really assess 
observations. Well, I've made something for you and every one of the students in your class, and this is called the observation wheel. Now, around the outside of this observation wheel, you will see the 40 skills that I put in that calendar for you. Now, at the end of the day, of every single day, your children take out their observation wheel and they sit in pairs and they have a chat. And one child says, hey, you know, what, what skill did you try to show today? One child says, you know what, I tried to show bravery today because I, I had to do a public speaking and I was really nervous. So I tried to, I, I tried to be brave and they get to color in one segment of this wheel showing that they are now edging towards mastery when it comes to bravery. Now, over a 10 week period in one term, your students will do this every single day and they will start to reflect on not what they can do academically, what skills they're developing independently and they'll reflect on the things they try to show but similarly you will be able to see which children are struggling with certain skills and then you can prepare an environment where they can be exposed to those things which is brilliant so now we've gone through the six steps of connection in your school the question is when you do this when you have the six steps of connection, you've built trust and independence and choice and freedom and agency in your school community. What happens? Well, let me tell you what happens. Magic happens. And let me explain how magic happens and how you can have it in your school. The reality is that if you have this kind of pedagogy in your school, anything is possible. Let me take you to Rise Experiential School. Now, Rise Experiential School is a school in Mumbai, in India, in Nasik. In September of this of 2023, they embarked with me on a journey of taking on the six steps of connection and trying to shift the mindset of their school community on how they approached education and how they qualified success. And I want to play this video to you now uh, and let you uh, enjoy it. And then I'll tell you exactly how you can have this in your school. Let's see if this plays and if you can hear the sound. Why did you decide to create a school and a school so wonderful as this one? I wanted to do something on my own and uh, uh, which deeply connects to me. Uh, I always thought to bring opportunities for children uh, to experience more, to explore, and if they can find their talents and we can help them nurture uh, those talents and they will live their passion. So something of these lines, I would say, that was the thought behind starting the school. So six months ago, uh, we released the course Be The Change on the Upskill platform. Be The Change is designed to allow children to choose an SDG from the United Nations, one that matters to them. And then they embark on this journey where they take on social activities in their community to try to change the world. Uh, your school was one of the pioneers of that course. You were one of the first people to enroll. Why did you choose Be The Change and what attracted you to the course? I was looking at opportunities that how do I integrate a project-based learning system in my school. With the new education policy coming, I wanted to have a, an integrated project where the whole school participates. And on the top of it, I am really keen and passionate about skill-based learning. So uh, to get the ball rolling, I said I, I came across Be the Chain and I felt that you know this is this is it, you know, let, let's get started. And it helped me deliver the complete project-based learning experience where students actually towards the end took action and the action that they took was you know they were they're planting trees in the forest they are teaching a school that is not well resourced like ours and they're also you know doing a food donation drive they're bringing food out there and all of this my students are happy these amazing children around us here have chosen zero hunger and just down the street there is a school where children don't get fed every single day. In fact, sometimes there is no food for those children. However, these children here at Rise Experiential School have decided that they're going to stop all of that. They collect food, they bring it from their homes, and as you can see, they make sandwiches, and they head down to a school just down the street 
to help the world become a better place by feeding those who find it very, very hard to get to. Now, this one you're doing today is SCG what? Every four five education. Quality education. Every week or every few weeks, you get these children together. Yes. Now, this is not your school, is it? No, no, it's not us. So why are you here? Uh, we just want to uh, make them aware of the outside world because uh, their, their thinking is very con conservative. So we, we want to make them more no knowledgeable about the outside world. Right, okay. So it feels good for me to help them oh. see their satisfying faces. It gives a very different satisfaction that I'm a human being and I'm able to help everyone. Okay, we'll leave it there um, because I want to continue. But you can you can actually watch that video on our homepage on the website. But as you can see, immediately from that, these children are learning within the boundaries of the curriculum, but also making the world a much better place. And that's exactly what we want. And what we find from our students when they take this on is that that's the only thing they want to do is change the world. And ultimately, that's what we want from our students. So once children know how good it feels to do good in the world, that's actually all they want to do. And our role as teachers is to create an environment where the magic can happen. So the question is, how can I help you? Here is how we can help here at UpSchool. Now I know that in India, we have the NEP 2020, which mandates that the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations must be included in the curriculum. Now, India is one of the leading countries to take that on. Many other countries around the world are about to embark on that journey. And here is how we can help you uh, put these, uh, these SDGs into your curriculum and have a learning experience like the one you've just seen. Because there are millions and millions of children all over the world who want to take this on. How can we do it? So at UpSchool, the organization that I co-founded and run now, um, we believe that many children around the world cannot get to the world. Uh, and Montessori, uh, who I trained under, said that if you can't take the child to the world, then bring the world to them. So at UpSchool, we've done exactly that. So the first thing that we can help you with is courses. Courses are completely free of charge. Over the last two years, we have been to Antarctica. We have been to the North Pole, the South Pole, Costa Rica. We've climbed Everest. We've been all over the world recording lessons for you, your school, your children to inspire them. That part of the lesson that I explained saying inspire, we've done the inspire part for you. And all of these are inside the curriculum, well within the bounds of what you need to teach anyway, but we brought the world into your classroom, all pre-recorded, self-paced for you to be able to do on your own. Now, if you're interested in actually taking part and having a look at some of these courses, then the QR code on your screen will take you directly there. All the courses are free, completely free. All of them come with teaching programs written by myself, translatable into any language in the world with one click of a button, just like this. All of them have assessment tasks, task cards, worksheets, keywords, comprehension, literacy, numeracy. All of them are there and ready for you to take on and utilize completely free of charge. And every day, every week, we're adding more of these courses to it. Now, here are some of the courses. And we have over 100 courses on the platform now, all with the same process involved. They are educational, they're academic, but they all make the world a better place. And when you take them on, many schools ask, well, how can we fit these into the curriculum? How can we possibly get them into our already crowded curriculum? I've written them in a way where they're aligned with science or geography or history or mathematics so that you can slip them straight into the curriculum and utilize them as you wish, take what you want and leave what you don't need. But all of them will revolutionize the way your school works and the way your children think about education. Every single course on the platform is aligned with the SDGs from the United Nations, meaning they all make the world a better place. But number two, all of our courses on the platform also come with a curriculum which explains exactly how they fit in. Now, as I said earlier, the NEP 2020 tells us that these need to be mandated. Well, we've solved that problem for you. Many schools around the world, if you're in Kenya and you've got the CBC curriculum and you're thinking, how am I going to have child-centered learning with service learning? It's so impossible. 
I've done it for you, no problem. If you're in India, how am I going to have the SDGs? It's impossible. I've done it for you, no problem. So all of that is in here and all of it is a, a totally free. You just need to scan a QR code previously and head straight there. Now, the reason we're here today is because I'm actually releasing a new course. It's already released. Uh, these are the three SDGs I've released. And I want to show you what I think personally is one of the greatest courses I've ever written. Uh, I'm very proud of this piece of work and I want to showcase it to you now. And I'll showcase it by taking you into the website and showing you exactly how this looks. Now, there are three uh, of these um, courses on your screen. SDG 1, 2, 3. There's actually 17. Of course, there's 17 SDGs. So let me just show you what SDG number 3 would look like if you were to embark on it. Let me just see if this works. If not, I'm hoping Mohammed Afsal is here to help me with this. Okay, let me just load this. Okay. Give me one second, everybody. I apologize about this little... I'm just shuffling something around okay here we go so let me just share my screen again i apologize a bit of a clunky one all good okay so this should explain to you this isn't the presentation over i want to share this to you very quickly thank you mohammed now here we are inside the course uh, so this is sdg number three sdg challenge number three now imagine this imagine your students in your school are taking this on now, it can be delivered in a series of ways. It can be independent to go home to your, your, uh, your students at home as homework. It can be done in the classroom with the teacher's guidance. It can be done independently with the students. So what is SDG number three? Now, here you have some teacher notes. These explain to your teacher how to teach this section. And here is what the students will read. And then they watch a video, this video here on SDG number three, to explain it. I won't play that now for you. But here comes the fun part. As you scroll down, you'll find, oh, look, there's a button here for the lesson plan. If I click this button, my lesson plan in line with the curriculum appears just like this. All done for me, already finished. No problem whatsoever. And the magic is if I click tools and translate, I can very quickly go, well, I'd like this document in Arabic, please. And then with a click of a button, your curriculum is in Arabic, Hindi, Bengali, English, Spanish, French, German, doesn't matter which one you want, done and dusted for you. Now, as you go down, you go, you follow through with a series of activities. The first activity is some keywords. There's a task card to download. You can edit it online or you can edit it in Canva. Every child who embarks on a journey on UpSchool gets a free Canva Pro account, including all the teachers too. Once again, there's teacher notes. So this is very basic so far. We're watching a video, we're doing some keywords. Now there's a quote of the week, and each week there's a quote for you to download and print and then to discuss as a class. Once again, teach your notes and you can download it. Now we get into the nitty gritty. So here we have an SDG um, infographic from the United Nations. We read it, we look at it, we look at the statistics, but the children then design their own. They click use a Canva template and they'll make their own SDG task card infographic. They then come down to the real world learning. Now in SDG number three, I made a task card. Take a look at this. On this task card are 12 ways, real world learning activities that your students can do in your school to achieve SDG number three. Let's take a look at them. Some of them are simple, some of them are difficult. Some of them are easy to achieve, some of them are really hard to achieve. So one of them says, design a poster that encourages people to eat healthy foods, display it where other people can see it. Very easy. Every school in the world can achieve that. Every child can go for that. But look at the one next to it. Visit an elderly home or draw a picture and write a letter to an elderly person asking them to share their wisdom and tips for being healthy as you get older. So now we have this community outreach. So some of these activities are small, some are big. We encourage your students, just like the video you watched, to take on one of them or take on all of them and watch the engagement level in your school go out of control. So each SDG has a different one of these. This is just for this week. Now, this is where things get very interesting indeed. As we scroll down, we find this wheel. Now on the wheel are 17 of the biggest leaders on the planet. Let me read them out to you. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama, Malala Yousaf, Antonio Guterres, Mark Zuckerberg. There are uh, Nehendra Modi's on there too. 
there are 17 of the world's most prominent leaders. Your students, at this point, spin the wheel. Let's see what happens on my spin. So I have got Richard Branson. So what do your students do when they spin the wheel? So they spin the wheel, so I don't have Richard Branson, it's stopping. Who do I have? It's still going. Let's watch. I have got Ursula von der Leyen. She's head of the uh, European Union uh, and a spokesperson for the European Union and the head of the European Commission. So the children spin it. Now what happens then? They get their person. They scroll down and then they'll find a task card looking like this. Now on this task card are all of those leaders. And on this chart is their email address, personal email address, and their postal address. Your students will find their leader. Now, my leader was Ursula von der Leyen, and you can see right here, there's her email address and there's her postal address. What am I going to do with that? Well, in the next stage, our students learn how to write an amazing letter. So here's an example of the letter that I have written to Bill Gates, and here's some tips for your students. Then the students write their very own letter. They click this template button, once again, teacher notes for your teacher to guide them. They write it and then they post it. And where do they post it? They post it to the address here. There's 17 SDG challenges. There's 17 people to spin, 17 people to find. So if you take all 17 of these uh, SDG challenges in your school, then your children will have written to the 17 biggest, most prominent, most impactful leaders on the planet. Imagine your children going home from school and saying to their mother or father, by the way, mom, did you know we're studying SDG number three and we're all we're writing to old people and visiting an old people's home. And also me and my friend Ahmed, we've written a letter to Mark Zuckerberg to tell him all about health and well-being and how we think that he can help us. And then when they've done all of that wonderful work and they're so inspired and the world is changing, they come to the final, well, the second final part, the penultimate part, where they get to make their own resume. Now, this is my resume, Gavin McCormack, obviously, but your children will get a template to build their own resume. Now, this is a resume for children. As you can see, they put their about me, the skills they like, some key facts about themselves, and every week, SDG number one, they talk about what they did. They talk about the skills that they developed and the impact they had. And every week, when they take a new challenge, they add a new page to their resume, meaning that after 17 weeks of all 17 SDG challenges, your students have their very own personal resume of all the experiences and all the skills they have developed that they can take on to their high school, they can take on to their university, they can take on into life. And this is something that your students will love and you don't need a PDF because everything is inside UpSchool. You just need to register and go inside to find it. Thank you for that a comment about the PDF. But the PDF is not required because all of this is free of charge inside the UpSchool platform for you to go and find. Now, we haven't finished yet. And remember, this is just one course of hundreds of courses. So let's see how the students finish this. Let's just have a recap. This is just one of the challenges. A video, some keywords, some vocabulary, a quote, an infographic, some challenges, spin the wheel, write a letter, send it, make your resume, and then click the green button. And it says, take your SDG quiz. So the children click this button, and then it opens up to the next page. And I will show it to you when it loads. One second, here it is. This is where your students consolidate their knowledge. So SDG number three, I'm ready to start. So it tells them some instructions, turn over the cards, one, two, three. I'm ready to watch the video. They watch the video again, click this button. I am ready and it's time for the quiz. Let's review, start the quiz. And here you have some questions. There are 10 questions in total. Your students need to get eight questions out of 10 correct. And if they do, they will receive their certificate, SDG number three, that they are a qualified SDG expert and there are 17 certificates to correct, collect. So the children will go through this. So look at this question. How does SDG 3 promote, uh, sorry, propose to impose global health? So, ooh, let's have a look at this. Uh, which one is it? And it will tick one. Uh, this is it. And they will tick it and they will go through here and it says, correct, go to the next question. I won't go through the quiz, but you can see how it works. And then we'll do 10 of these 
And then if they get 80%, they will achieve their certificate. If they don't, it's not a problem. They can always try again. Now, this is just one SDG quiz. There are 17, but there's also hundreds of courses on the platform, all free, that look just like this. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing that screen now and go to and back to my presentation, if I may. Let me just go back to this presentation, if I can. Here it is. Yes, now, uh, actually, let me stop sharing my screen for a second. Okay, where am I? Give me one second, guys. So I hope you liked that. Um, and remember, all of this content is free and will always be free for you. Uh, I'm just going to present this one second. Present a view. Present full screen. Now, let me just uh, stop sharing again, Mohammed. Sorry, I'll start sharing again. Here is the window. I'm not going to finish. Good. Okay, here we are. Thank you, Mohammed, for doing this uh, technical thing in the background. I appreciate you. It's very tricky for me. Okay, let me just skip through the presentation and get to the right screen. Sorry about this. Where am I? Yes, here I am. Yes, here. So now you've seen the SDG challenges. Um, I go and try them. And you know what I would do? I would do this tomorrow. I would go and enroll. And if you need to enroll your entire school, let's say you have 20,000 kids, no problem. At the end of this conference, I'll send you an email. Or you can send me an email, and I will enroll all of your kids in one click. I will do that for you. I've just enrolled all of lots and lots of Ryan schools, and I can see there's some teachers here from Ryan schools. We've enrolled all of the Ryan schools children. Over 100,000 children have come on the platform and from one school, so we can do that for you. It's not a logistical problem for you. That's my job. Now, what else can I offer you? Well, lots of schools will think, well, you know, how can I actually integrate this into my school as a whole school approach? No problem. I have made, we have made at UpSchool, um, an UpSchool um, framework. This framework, this is just one page of a huge document which tells you how to change the mindset of your community in terms of moving towards a more child-centered approach to learning. So you can see, when you take on a framework like this, and this is available on our platform, and I will show you a QR code to go and visit that in such a, in a minute's time, you'll have global impact as a school, you'll have very empowered individuals, like extremely empowered individuals. And you will have a global collaboration because we have hundreds of thousands of schools on the platform that you can team up with. You'll have SDG uh, achievement and you'll have global citizenship, which I think is probably one of the most important things on the planet is having global citizens. Now, how do you get your hands on this framework? Well, once again, it's free of charge and you can find it uh, on our platform. We have over 182 countries now, this uh, map is old, and children from all over the world are taking on our courses, doing remarkable things, getting in the newspapers, writing books, planting forests, building houses, helping the homeless, sorting out rivers. You name it, it's all happening, and it's all happening for free. We want you to be part of that. Now, you might say to me, Gavin, you know, very tricky because my teachers have a different mindset. They're not going to really think uh, like you want us to think. Uh, they're very linear. They're very teacher-centered. They stand at the front and they teach their classes like this. How can I possibly shift their mindset? Or even yourself. Maybe it's you. You're like, look, I'd really like to do this. I really would. But I, change is hard. How do I manage the class? How do I set them free? What's this part about inspiration? And I don't know. Maybe something's going to go wrong. Don't worry. I have written a teacher training course, in fact, 10 of them. And these teacher training courses sit on the UpSchool platform. Now, these are not free. The only way we can make money on our platform is to sell these teacher training courses. So if you are interested in doing this as a whole school, then what's really amazing is the teacher training courses uh, that are on the platform, and you can access them via this QR code on your screen right here. Um, these teacher training courses will enable your school to shift but also they will give them the keys to be a child-centered, truly, truly child-centered educational approach to teaching. Um, and even better, they're internationally accredited by Montessori Australia. And you will receive a certificate at the end, which you can take to other countries. You can actually say that you're well on your way to becoming a Montessori teacher, qualified Montessori teacher, because they are an affiliate organization of ours. They have 
uh, endorsed uh, teacher training programs, and thousands and thousands of teachers around the world are already taking them, and they're there for you. Now, they are chargeable, but the price point is extremely low. I think for the short courses, it's 1,300 rupees or $25, and for the master class, which is absolutely amazing, 25 hours long, that's about 10,000 rupees, but it's well worth it. I put a lot of time into these courses and also I teach them alongside MIT's leading neuroscientist so that the education that you're hearing is backed up by science. It's not just me saying it to you. Now, why do I bother doing this? Because the true measure of any educational institute will be measured by the citizens that walk on the streets in 20 years. You will not get to sit in the shade of the oak tree that you plant today because you won't be around, but somebody will. And our job is to gear our future and embark on a journey where our students are empathetic, loving, caring, considerate, compassionate, and they've got the skills to take on the world. It's our job to devise a system that enables these citizens to grow. And I'm guessing that's why you're here today. And if you really want to make that shift, then we've got all of these four components for you. Now, there's one thing one final piece to the puzzle, and that is the curriculum. Gavin, we already have a curriculum. We follow the uh, CNBC. We follow the British curriculum, the American, the IB, the Montessori. We already have one. No problem. I'm aware of these curriculum documentations. And I know how they work. So what I've done is I've looked into the future. What is the world going to be looking for in the future in terms of our students? What skills will they need? What talents will they have to have? What will future industries need when your children go for an interview at SpaceX or Tesla or Amazon or Wikipedia? Uh, what are they going to be looking for? So I've put together, and this is just a sample of one, a what's called future-focused real-world learning curriculum, which sits alongside your normal curriculum. And in this curriculum, as you can see, are all the things that we should be teaching but we find so hard to integrate. What I've done is I've written the curriculum and in the green column, you can see the cross curricular link, meaning you don't need to reinvent the curriculum. You just need to slip these things into your already existing curriculum. So skills like critical thinking, creativity, independence, determination, communication, problem solving, time management, adaptability, curiosity, respect, responsibility, mindfulness, resilience, empathy, cooperation. These are the skills we want. How do we get them? We have the curriculum documentation for you from K to 12 so that you can slip this straight into your documents. Your teachers can take these on when they wish. Subjects such as digital literacy, critical thinking, financial literacy, health and well-being, and all the others that you love and that you know. And there's so much more to talk about. But as you can see, at UpSchool, we have all four of the things that you need to make that shift towards becoming a more holistic, child-centered school, as well as achieving the SDGs. With no more work for you to do, as you can see, I've done all the work for you, and it's completely free. The only things you will need to pay for are the teacher training. So I end this talk almost exactly on one hour with a thank you. A thank you to you for attending, a thank you to Mohammed Afsal for organizing this and helping me along the way, and a thank you to all of the teachers out there who are doing their best to make the world a better place in their classrooms. Hope sits on the carpet of every classroom in the world, and I am happy to be alongside you. If you need anything, or you need onboarding, you need your school enrolling, you have questions, you can fire us an email at hello at upschool.co. You can scan the QR code and take you straight to the website. But at the end of this webinar, I will email all of you within the next 10 minutes. Check your junk mail in 10 minutes time, and I will send you a way in which you can enroll your entire school like this onto the Upschool platform, and we can work together to make the world a better place. Mohammed, if you're there, and I hope you are, thank you so much for today's session. I hope that uh, the attendees have enjoyed it, and I also hope that you've enjoyed listening. I know you've heard me a lot, and I apologize for that. Mohammed, are you there, sir? I think maybe Mohammed is frozen. We'll give him another 30 seconds to appear. Oh, I, I'm having a very bad internet. Hello? We can hear you now. We can hear you now, yes. Oh, no, we've lost him. 
Okay, maybe we'll say goodbye without Mohammed. Uh, okay. I think okay. maybe he's, in, um, oh, he's here. Thank you, thank you, Gavin. Connection is very bad. Thank you, Gavin, to be here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your time uh, coming to this uh, webinar. And do uh, check it out. Uh, uh, fill up the feedback form, and we'll be sending you a certificate of participation. OK, everybody, thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure to be here. If you need anything, you know exactly where I am. And I hope to see you on the Upskill platform soon so we can achieve the SDGs together. Thank you so much. Goodbye.